behind. It's the problem. Yeah. I mean, nobody heard nothing there. Okay, is he okay? Got him, double play. That's what we needed right there, something like that. Something like that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I did. We started 10 minutes early. I was not quite ready. So Terry gave up three consecutive hits after a um, pop-up that we that they he and Isai slammed into each other on the opening batter, and then three consecutive hits um, have given the Rough Riders this morning a first and third with two outs because of a line solid line drive to Ricardo who flipped over to Jorge to get the force at second. Ah, oh, we just had a balk from Teddy. Runner, runner at first went and uh, got Teddy's attention. So Teddy's got to shake that off now. And a ground ball right to Joe. He picks it up, steps on the base. That will end the inning. So what started off, bases loaded, no outs. Uh, Rough Riders do put one across, but uh, a lot of less damage than looked like it was originally going to happen. So that's, uh, that's your Jackrabbits through the top of the first. Um, and so Teddy gave up one earned run. Jackrabbits will now take the field. And up to bat, we will have Joe and Jorge 
Gianni, Teddy, when those gentlemen get on, Chris, Aaron, and Javon. I'm gonna fix my my shot up. Oh, that's the best I can do. Ugh, I gotta go fix that camera. Third base. Try to see if I can turn second base. All right, so. All right, well, it looks like we got a better shot of all the bases, ladies and gentlemen. So we now should be ready to go. Welcome to the bottom of the first, where the Jackrabbits have started off in a hole, one nothing. Joe will step in. This Joe showing bunt, strike 57 on the outside corner. And... How you doing? Hello. You, oh, the back of your neck is burned. Oh, the whole of you is very burned. I see that now. Oh, golf. Joe taking a 58 mile an hour pitch there for a ball. And we have a beautiful day at the ballpark, ladies and gentlemen. Absolute beautiful day at the ballpark. And should be all weekend. So no more rain outs, no more wind outs. It should be a wonderful weekend to play a bunch of baseball. And Joe with a shot down the right field line. That ball is going to drop in fair for a single. Nice leadoff hit from Joe. Well done. Good morning. So Joe now on first with Jorge will be stepping in. And the ball is overthrown and will go out of play. And so Joe will take second easily on the overthrow. You can see him there in the background.
So there's a lot going on. Um, trying to keep track of all that before we get started. Normally we do all this stuff before we are, go live, so apologies everybody. So Jorge now up with the hype fire in his hand and Joe at second, he had a f break towards third to see what the catcher was gonna do, but uh, did not go to third. Jorge now with an uh, one ball count. Second baseman holding Joe very close. Jorge with a shot to the left side. And that ball is gonna get him at first, but Joe is gonna move over. And so that's the uh, equivalent of a bunt there. Put the tying run in scoring position. Gianni will take strike one there. That was 56. And the next pitch outside, 57. And Pitch, a shot to the left side. And that will definitely score uh, Joe. And we'll see Gianni take first. So Teddy now will step in. Teddy's swinging the hype fire as well. And Teddy with a chance now to help himself out. Gianni on first, as you can see. Steady swing and a miss at a 57 mile an hour pitch way outside. G uh, Teddy has done himself some favors in the recent games, moving his uh, batting average to 333. And with a shot to the left side to the. And they got him at first. That picture in a picture kind of worked best there. So Teddy now uh, did move the runner over, but two outs and Chris up. Chris uh, hitting 368 for the season. A real improvement for him through the fall ball where he struggled uh, mightily. Made some big changes in the off season, including a lot of T work. And so he is uh, moved into third on the team in batting average. That ball is low. He's got five RBIs on the season with the uh, go-ahead runner standing out at second. So I'm gonna have to put a ball into the outfield. Probably score Gianni swing and a miss at a 59 mile an hour pitch in his eyes. But that probably looked really good. As I mentioned, it's a glorious day here at the ballpark. Low 60s at first pitch. Make it as high as mid 70s. There's rumors that your Mile High City will get to 80 today. And that's strike three for Chris on swing and a miss. So we tie the game. No one wins the inning, no one loses the inning. And with that, uh, we will go to the top of the second. Jackrabbits will return to the field. Teddy will return to the mound. And we'll see how things go here. Uh, we are in a U-Triple-S-A tournament. So I'm gonna need to turn to our resident uh, rules expert, Mark, who is in, in person today, not all the way over in uh, halfway across the country on business. So we'll go get some US uh, U S A uh, rules, understand the run rule, pitching limits, etc. I'll give him that homework and we'll come back here with some answers. Teddy leaps onto the field and we'll be picking up the ball here in a second and doing his warm up pitches. Your uh, Teddy's dad, me, Mike here uh, is going to take a little bit of a moment. I was in a sweatshirt to begin with, but it's already too hot for sweatshirt weather. So um, we're going to need to just go silent here for a second.
Teddy took the ball here in the top of the first. We were broadcasting. I just wasn't commentating because I didn't have all my cameras set up. But uh, Teddy had a, a, t a rougher first inning, um, but only gave up one run. But for this for the season, he's arguably the guy to get the first ball um, or first pitch um, because he's thrown 14 innings through before we started today, and his ERA was a lowly 1.5. So that'll move up after that first inning, but. Uh, Teddy also with a whip, which is walks and hits per innings pitched, is only 1.2. So what that means is he's giving up 1.2 hits and walks in an inning. Again, that first inning didn't do him any good uh, on those stats. First ball was a, the first pitch was a ball. Next pitch, and that ball is hit right to left field. And that was nice. That was a 56 mile an hour pitch. Nice catch out there by, is that Chris? Yeah, Chris. Let's go through the defensive alignments, which I haven't done yet. Sorry, my bad. I think we're finally getting ready. Teddy's on the mound, uh, east side behind the plate. Joe at first, Ricardo at second, Jorge at short, Gianni at third. Chris in left, as we already saw him flash a little leather there for the first out of the inning. Jack in center and Javon in right. So Teddy hits 60 on the gun there, but the ball is high. So he was shooting for first pitch strike, first man out, and 15 pitches. So missed that on the first two batters, although did get the first batter out. And we'll see how his pitch count goes. Foul ball. <laughs> Eugene, what are you doing? <laughs> Eugene just came up and gave me a little love squeeze on the left earlobe. <laughs> Nothing but love for the broadcasting brew, I guess. I like that, that little earlobe squeeze. That was, that was a nice way to say hi. Is that how you do it in Long Beach? Little earlobe squeezes? I just did it for you, Coloradoan. That's all. Shout out to the Coloradans from Eugene. All right. Uh, one ball, one strike, one down now for Teddy as he comes set. That ball is way outside. 57 on the gun. So, as usual, the broadcasting team here is Mike on the microphone and Keith on the scoreboard, also the one who keeps us on the straight and narrow with uh, the equipment, making sure everything's charged and working. Teddy with a pop up to the right side. Joe is underneath it in foul territory and he squeezes it just out of the frame there, sorry. So two down. So Teddy not uh, fooling anybody uh, necessarily with his pitches, pitch into contact today, which is fine. That is perfectly acceptable. It's part of his, um, his formula for success. So two up and two down for the Rough Riders. Let's see if Teddy can get the first pitch strike here. He does not, floats that one at 60 high again. So almost an exact repeat pitch of the previous pitcher, or batter, excuse me. And a pop-up straight back. I got it. Oh, beyond me. Unfortunate. One ball, one strike. So Teddy looking looking good. Ball in and around the zone. Getting the strike calls and making the Rough Riders swing. There's a curveball. Woo! That was pretty. 54. Wow. Uh, so that was that was a really nice pitch there. Ball started over the middle of the plate, broke away from the right-handed batter, and came in slower. So if you notice, the batter was way ahead of that. Now batter with two-strike approach, choked way up on the ball on the bat, excuse me, and the ball's in the dirt. So 2-2 two -two now. Teddy comes set. And he pot, hits that ball straight up to center field. You'll see Jack's underneath it. And Jack comes down with it. So three up, three down for Rough Riders. Teddy gets them all out on pop-ups. And with that, that brings us to the bottom of the second. We will have Aaron, Javon, Ricardo, Isai up. When those gentlemen get on, you'll see Kieran, Isaiah, Jack, and Jabrell to round out the bottom of the order. Jack Rabbits desperately need to put some runs on the board here and win the inning because defensively they did what they needed to do. I'd have to go back and check, but I'll bet Teddy was right around 15 pitches there. So did most of what he needed to do to continue to be the, the more, uh, Saturday morning starter. 
uh, that inning. So we'll see how, uh, how it goes for inning three. Moving along quite rapidly here as we are, we had start time at 7.50. Again, apologies for getting you the links late. Uh, I was ready for an eight o'clock first pitch. We're 25 minutes in already to this game and going to the bottom of the second. Hey Mark, yeah. I'm going to give you an assignment. Can What's you that? can you help us understand the U.S.A. rules for innings pitched and yeah, I'll and look them run, up. And run and run run count and stuff. Yeah. I'm on their website now. Okay, I couldn't even find the tournament stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard me. I just assigned Mark some homework there, so he can come back with uh, what's going on. Uh, just a shout out to Tony and Cole, who were at our Wednesday game. They're playing in the same tournament. Uh, they're playing in the 13U, I believe, AAA uh, division. We're in the uh, 13U AA division. So they'll be across town uh, here uh, in your Mile High City. And we wish them best of luck on their games as well today. Whoops. So batting, who's up first, Aaron? Oh, that's easy, sort by average. <laughs> oh, my bad, 14U. Tony and Cole are playing 14U, so uh, definitely uh, playing in a different part of town. So anyway, regardless, we wish um, Cole and his uh, team of the day the best of luck. That 14U, by the way, plays 60 feet to the pitching rubber and 90 feet to the bases. So here we're only playing 80 feet between bases and I believe 54 feet to the rubber. So a uh, step up there. So Aaron will step in. Aaron, second on the team in batting average at a 435. Just was lightning hot for our first couple of games. And Lice continues that with a shot up the middle. Whoops. And Aaron with a first pitch single. Ball goes and dies in the, in the grass in uh, the outfield there. Aaron with a wide turn, but he's in there safely. So first pitch strike, uh, first pitch hit there. Javon with an on-base percentage of uh, 563, best, second best on the team. Foul ball right off the catcher's face. So we're gonna take a little time. So Coach Wisely just checking in on his catcher who took that foul ball off the face. And Coach Hunter pulling Javon way down the line to give the catcher some time to shake that off. So good quality sportsmanship across uh, both teams there. Oh, swing and a miss of the ball out of the strike zone there. So Javon with that uh, 563 on base percentage, second best on the team, is because he can uh, draw some walks. He's a little, struggled getting the bat on the ball after a, a torrid first weekend. Swing and a miss at a ball in his eyes, 56 miles an hour. So one down now for the Jackrabbits. And Ricardo will step in. Ricardo, those who've been paying attention will know that Ricardo's been pulling his head while swinging the bat, and so that's really impacted his batting average this year. But it's it's early, so let's not get too excited. Um, but a batting average of just 176, so below the Mendoza line. However, with so few at bats, I think he's only had 14 at bats. Uh, a hit here would would jump him up over 200. So let's see what he can do. And he hits one deep into left center, and that ball is going to be. Is gonna just only move everybody uh, 80 feet there. I thought that ball, there is some deep grass out there, I think, because that ball looked like that was gonna roll to the fence. So Ricardo with a big, big hit there. East side now, up. And that'll give us runners on first and second with one down. East side here, let's see if he puts that bat on the ball or it maybe goes for a bunt. 56 on outside. So this is a good place to be. Two runners on, only one down. And it's, no, no worries. Between innings would be great, Mark. And that ball is in the dirt. Excellent stop by number 27, the 
catcher there. That ball was not where he expected, and he got down and blocked it. Kept the runners from advancing. Pretty short backstop here with a pretty high all wood fence around. Uh, probably kind of hip high. Strike 58 on the outside corner. Well placed pitch by number one. Ball outside, 3 1. That ball's in the dirt, so Isai will draw his eighth walk of the year, and that will load the bases. So Kieran will come up. I was looking at uh, stats last night, and I was uh, so pleasantly surprised to see Kieran third on the team, well, tied for second on the team for on-base percentage at a 563. So Kieran really, it, it does make a lot of sense that uh, Kieran would as a catcher, know where the strike zone is, but he has, uh, I believe, the second most base on balls on the team, and so that's really helped his. Uh, sorry, does not he has he's tied for third bit most base on balls, um, but it, you can see his on base percentage of 563 means that uh, over half the time he is getting on base, and after that huddle with coach, everybody breaks apart. So the first pitch here after a coach's visit is always a fastball because the coach just went out there and said throw strikes. So this will be a fastball to Kieran and hopefully Kieran knows it's coming. And it was right there, 56, right down the middle, right down Colfax. Base is packed for the Jacks and one down. So Kieran takes strike two at 57 at the shoulders on the outside corner. Now he's got to have the two strike approach. We've been working a ton on this in practice. Choking up on the bat, legs spread wider than usual so you can get the bat head around faster. Swing and a miss. Uh, strike three, so base is loaded and two down now. Isaiah's up. So as Kieran dug himself on the hole there, taking the first two strikes, and then had to had to swing at something close. Gets the second out of the inning. Isaiah now in. That ball is high at 58. So Isaiah has an on-base percentage of 471, but an on-base plus slugging of 743. So he is when he gets on, he slugs that ball and hits a hits a deep 59 mile an hour strike at the knees on the outside corner. Just need to move everybody up 80 feet at this point to win the inning. Oh, 57 right down Colfax. That's the picture you got to be swinging at. Can't get on if we don't swing the bat. One of the things coaches was pleased, coach was pleased with this week was how often we were putting the ball in play and making everybody make a, uh, a defensive play on us rather than sitting up there with the bat on our shoulder. Two balls, two strikes, two down, bases loaded. This is the key pitch for the pitcher here. He cannot afford to fall behind it. Isaiah. And Isaiah takes strike three right down the middle. And that's it. Coach a little upset with uh, his um, uh, with his with his batters there, watching three pitches down the middle. And with that, we put the put the bases loaded, but we score no runs. So we go to the top of the third, one one. Jack Rabbits have played the Rough Riders in the past, not this year, but in previous years. And I uh, struggled to find our previous record against them. Of course, every year is different kids, and every, ki every year the kids are different. So may not make much of a difference, as we're seeing today, on a 1-1 tie through two innings. But I believe we had, uh, we had the historical record is I believe we've won more than we've lost to the Rough Riders. So Kieran will uh, put on the, the battle armaments and join uh, Teddy as his battery mate behind the plate. We'll see Jabrell at first. I love Jabrell. Oh, nope, just kidding. Jabrell was warming up the infield on behalf of Joe. So Joe will take over at first, uh, or where he's been. And then we've got Aaron and Wright. 
We've got Ricardo at second. We've got Jorge at short and Gianni at third. In left, we've got Chris in center and we've got Jack. And I was wrong, Aaron is not in right. Javon is in right. So that will be our defensive lineup as we go to the top of the third with a 1-1 tie. And I'll see if Mark knows uh, run rule and or uh, time rule and also pitching. Excellent throw down from Kieran here. In steps the first rough rider of the inning. Can't see his number. It looks like maybe number five. And Teddy will come set. And the first pitch is fouled off to the right side. So first pitch strike, which is what Teddy's trying to do. Now the next step is to uh, get this guy out. And Teddy throws what well, looked to be maybe a changeup or a curveball, fouled off way off to the side. So the batter now in a hole with 0-2 count. Teddy now can do what he wishes with this next pitch. Let's listen to Greg Maddox, one of the all-time best pitchers of baseball, saying he never wasted an 0-2 count. He went right after the guy. And so does Teddy. And he fouls that ball. Oh, it's 56 is the number. So... Uh, and we're short balls on the field from all those foul balls. Looks like maybe there's only two. Looks like I see Jack warming up in the uh, bullpen for uh, the Jack Rabbits. Jack would be due up in the bottom of the inning, so he's getting his throws in now. And looks like Teddy will just go three innings, which is fine, saves his arm. Would have been nice to put up a crooked number in the bottom of the second to potentially have even had Teddy not have to pitch the third. but. Too late for that now. No balls, two strikes. And Teddy throws a 62 mile an hour fastball. That's the fastest we've seen him throw all season, I believe, but not anywhere near the zone. So tried to get the batter to go swing, uh, but not especially convincing, I think, for or, or tempting for that uh, batter for number 56. He's swinging the cat 10. Or sorry, it's the Cat X. Swing and a miss, a 60 mile an hour high heater at the shoulders. So Teddy goes and gets him on four pitches. Or maybe five pitches, I guess five pitches. Swing and a miss, 64 on the outside corner. I have no idea where the strength is coming from, but I love it. Teddy's throwing 10 miles an hour faster than he was in the first inning. So, and uh, Rough Riders struggling to catch up with it. Teddy has uh, one earned run charged to him this game, as you can see, and he has one strikeout. Beautiful, 51 mile an hour. I couldn't tell if that curved or if that was just a change up, but man, change, I think, from 64 to 51. I pity anybody to try to make that, uh, make that alteration. So Teddy throws 59 and high. Good stop by Kieran. So the goal, I think, is to spread out uh, the catching duties so that the boys don't get too tired. The hope we playing, uh, hope is that we play five games, two today. Uh, that was a curveball, I think. It kind of hung on the inside corner, and. Rolls in on her scooter. We got. And we're waiting on a ball still. I'm not sure where the second foul ball went. So Teddy will go retrieve that after it got uh, thrown back by 
one of the Rough Riders who'd gone out of the uh, dugout to retrieve it. Oh, now we found our second ball. That's great. So one ball, two strikes, and one down. Titty now with the fourth pitch of the at-bat. And that ball is in the dirt. Kieran knocks it off his knees and goes off to the side. So Teddy overthrowing there. That one was also 62, it looked like, but throwing too hard. And the next pitch, Teddy comes set, takes a deep breath. There it is, swing and a miss, 59 on the outside corner. Extremely well located for Teddy, loved it. Two down, that's two strikeouts. Uh, so just a, just a heads up for Papa, the uh, performance contract you've uh, signed with him at the beginning of the season, that's a dollar now to you, Papa, that you'll have to pony up at the end of the season, which I imagine sitting in your, at home in Vegas, you're plenty happy to, to pay up. And a ground ball to second base. Ricardo picks up and throws it to first. And on 11 pitch, three up, three down inning for Teddy. The Rough Riders go down without a threat. It goes to the bottom of the third, 1-1. One, one. Let's see if the Jackrabbits understand how to swing a bat when the ball comes down the middle at 57 miles an hour. With that, we will see Jack lead off, Jabril, and then Joe. Jorge Gianni Teddy would be ready to put the helmet on when those guys get on. And I'm going to go find out from Mark if he knows any of the rules and simultaneously also going to plug in my second base camera so it doesn't run out of power like we had happen on Wednesday. And Jack will step in here. Only lefty on the team, uh, draping a flag out of the back pocket. Usually he's got the oven mitt, not sure. Oh, he's got the oven mitt in the other pocket. Swing and a miss, 61, low and away. So that pitch was, I think, very tempting, but um, a little bit rough for Jack there. Jack with a swing at a second ball but he turned it into a strike. So Jack has struggled at the plate, there's no question, uh, this year. Uh, looking for his second hit of the season. And from the wind up, here comes 14. Foul ball, tip, and in the glove, 65. That ball, I don't know if 65 might have been catching part of the uh, foul tip, but anyway, throw hard, hard pitch, and Jack down on three pitches. He will then put his hat on, looks like he's gonna come in and pitch the fourth inning. Pitching, like how many innings you could pitch. Jabril now stepping in with the fire in his in his hands, the hype fire, the often or the recently under a controversial or controversial hype fire that's argued that it's been juiced in the ball. That first pitch was a ball in the dirt. It was 64 miles an hour, so really fast. Let's go, Jack Rabbits. Here is the mercy roll. Okay, you want to do, want to do mercy roll for us, Darf? Just because I found it. Okay. Okay. For a six inning game, for a seven inning game, if four innings have been played, or two has scored more runs after three and one half innings, the game shall be declared a game. Okay, that's time. swing and a miss. Sixty-two inside. So now we got two balls and one strike. So Jabril swing at the right pitch there. He's just got to make contact. Seven innings. 
15 after the third. 15 after third for so 12 for the 12 after the four. 12 after four. And eight after five. And eight after five. Swing and a miss at strike two, 63 miles an hour. That was a good cut there. So quite a bit different than Kaba. Yeah. And at one one with uh, inability for either team to really uh, put a rally together, it we're not probably going to be uh, stressing that mercy rule today. We're probably more likely going to beat the hour 45 rule. Here's the Strike three, 64 in the outside corner. That was, uh, with two strikes, you gotta probably be swinging there. Okay. And we go to the top of the order, Joe's up. So Joe had one hit in the in his first at bat. You all missed that because I didn't have the streaming uh, link out. But if you go back, scroll all the way back, you'll see he got a, got a hit in his first at bat. And foul ball, 64. In the There's a whole bunch of different stuff to pitching for this. So first of all, a player that pitches more than three innings in one day yeah. must rest the next day. Oh, that's why Teddy didn't pitch anymore. So probably. Yeah. And then um, ball away, 63. I gotta say this this uh, umpire has a very good strike zone. It's been very consistent. It's very tight to the plate. He hasn't been. He hasn't been calling uh, excess throws by any means. And there's three day, three inning maximum per day. Oh, okay, three inning maximum. Mm -hmm. So how could you possibly throw more than three innings in there? Well, it didn't. That's confusing to me. It is. But the moral of the story is no one's going to throw more than three innings because you don't want to have to rest the kid on Saturday. And the next pitch. Strike 63 miles an hour on the outside corner. The boys need to understand that that is a strike. Looks a little away, but it's not away by much and not swinging out. So two balls, two strikes, and two down. Joe has to be in that leadoff hitter mentality of I gotta get on, I gotta get on. I think Extend that's one day, that's the maximum to not have to rest. There it is. The next day. Oops. And a throw over to first, up to a ground ball to second, on a 4-3 put out. So it looks like uh, three up, three down for the Jackrabbits. We matched the Rough Riders there in that third inning. We will go to the top of the fourth. Jack will take the hill and we will see how, um, how Jack Rabbits respond now. Jack, of course, had a phenomenal outing on Wednesday of one inning ball where he shut down the slammers. His issue is not can he throw, his issue is can he keep his emotions in check? And if he can, he is very unhittable. He throws low 60s as a lefty. And he's working on a uh, changeup, I believe, as well. So a two pitch combo arsenal. And uh, we'll see how, how this goes. So I think the moral of the story is okay. they can pitch three, what that meant is three innings is the maximum to not have to rest the next day. Right. And then the total tournament, do we know what they can throw? Probably yeah. six then, right? No, I think it's more. It's a little bit more. Oh, it's um, a little bit more. The total tournament is three day maximum is eight. A three day? Well, we're only playing a two day tournament. Do they have a two day max? No. It okay. just says. Uh, Okay. My guess is three three innings One per day, day means you're going to get six innings. Is seven, yeah. yeah. And a call from Kieran for balls in coming down. So let's look at the defensive setup here. We've got a different setup. We've got Jack on the mound and Kieran behind the plate. Uh, Gianni still at third. Jorge and Ricardo will be up the middle, but Jabrell at first, which I really love Jabrell at first. Just a big target and a boy who's not afraid to get dirty and go get that ball. Aaron in right. Chris in center. I really like that speed there in center. And in left, somebody with their arms crossed, and I can't tell who that is. Who's got their arms crossed in left? Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah's dad filling me in on who those arms were. All right, Jack with the first pitch. 59 on the outside corner. I'll come back in the middle. Yeah, I got to go hang that battery on my second base camera. It's already down to 70%. And we are 45 minutes into this game top of the fourth. Uh, at this pace, we would get seven innings in. In the history of Jackrabbits, I'm not sure we've ever played seven innings. So uh, Jack now with two strikes. Let's see what he does. He's been painting that outside corner and he goes back there again. Three pitches, all of them 58 or 59 miles an hour, all of them on the right, on the outside corner that that ump likes. And three pitches and one out. So Jack, Challenging Teddy to be the be the ace again. Coach said you want to be the ace of the staff. It's first pitch strike, and Jack, <laughs> Kieran with a little bit of a look what I got uh, there on the foul ball tip into his glove, but uh, he's got the good web to get it. So Jack now four pitches, four strikes. 
And that ball goes up the middle. And the single, the runner will take first. Not, not a problem, that is not a problem. Jack now is the lefty, has uh, a unique move to first. Let's see if we can uh, get that runner who may be going. Here, be ready to pop. And Jack waiting on a hitter. Oh, we'll have lefty versus lefty, given that lefties, I think, are only something like seven to 10% of the general populace. A lefty pitcher versus a lefty batter, less common, although obviously. What a great throw from Kieran. Actually, too strong of a throw from Kieran. My bad. Uh, but a little high. I'm not sure it gets him even if he does uh, uh, throw it um, on the target. That ball is high. So the left-handed batter kind of crowding the what is his inside corner, which had been the, oh, 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 sorry, inside part of the plate, which had been the outside to the right-handers. And Jack had been living out there. A little tougher to throw inside, but he does right there. And nicely fouled off by number nine. All right, Tony, I don't understand what's saying. Sixth game, another inning. Oh, if we get to the sixth tied, we get another inning. Is that what you're telling me? Um, and then Tony believes that Teddy should get four more innings tomorrow. Uh, and if we get to the championship game, potentially another inning. And the throw down a third. Gets him. Gets him. He's out. Beautiful throw by Kieran. Yeah. The uh, runner there didn't look like he had a great jump. So two down, bases empty. Big, big play by Kieran. And a good tag by Gianni. I don't know if you go back and watch that. Gianni waits for the ball to come to him and then just slaps the glove down. And the batter slides into it. He didn't go get it. And they have to bring the ball, bring it back. And that ball's corked into center field. Chris underneath it, off his glove. That's going to end up being a double. Or a single, uh, yeah, a two-run error, really. Uh, just off Chris's glove out there in center field. So huge, huge that we picked off the runner at third. Kieran. Uh, because that, that saved the run right there. So big, big play. So Jack now in a position he just was. Do it again, Kieran. Um, where he's got a runner on second. And now two down, but another lefty up. So baseball does overrepresent left-handed ba uh, batters and pitchers. Uh, it's a funny thing about this sport. Uh, sort of like how uh, soccer uh, attackers tend to be heavily right-footed. Swing and a miss. Um, for the, for the, uh, Jack asking for a new ball in, in person, going with a little personal visit there with the ump, doesn't like it. Generally what a pitcher does is he steps off and just asks for the, a new ball and then will toss the ball into his catcher. But instead, um, Jack runs it forward. Jack paying no attention to the man on second. And he takes that ball. Uh, inside, he's going to eat that. Runner will easily take third. So that ball, uh, Jack asked for and then immediately threw inside there, way inside to the batter. Two ball, one strike count, and two down. Kieran with an excellent stop there. Ball in the dirt, 3-1. Hugely important. Um, Hugely important pitch right here. Ah, uh, and Jack lost him. So we'll have runners on the corners. And a right-hander up. This suits Jack a little bit better. He can live on that outside corner. Oh, they almost got him over there at first. They almost got him over there, Jack. So good, good play there by Jack and by Jabrell on the pickoff. Freezes the runner. Swing and a miss. It's 60 just at the chin there, that rising fastball. I don't know if Jack's been working on a kind of maybe a 
four seamer maybe a little rise there I'm not sure but beautiful pitch especially coming off the freeze so he's changing his timing to the plate and everything slide step oh that ball is hit into right center that is going to score one if not two it's going all the way to the fence and we'll see if we get a third base play a third and he's in there with a triple a two-run triple for the Rough Riders so can't begrudge him much that was a well-struck ball And two runs, not a big deal, especially with the Jackrabbits in the bottom of the inning. We'll go into the heart of their order, but really need to stop, uh, stop it here with only a two-run lead. Probably the most important defensive thing right now is for Kieran to make sure the ball never scoots behind him. And that ball is two outside, ball two. And then ready for the... Jackrabbit's defense to make a play when they hit the ball. That ball is stroked to deep center over Chris's head. That will score one. Probably a play at third here. And the ball gets away. And we had him had the ball not got away, but another triple. So back to back triples. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know the difference, the Jack, the Rough Riders are swinging at pitches down the middle. The Jackrabbits are not. That is, that is the difference right there. So back-to-back -back triples. Jack now from the windup gives himself a little bit more uh, oomph on that. Hits 64 on the gun, but way outside. So this is where Jack uh, really has to battle his own emotions and take a breath. He is clearly frustrated. Wow. Comes way inside on 17. 17 does a great job of avoiding it. And we get a timeout. He's pitching out of anger. You can tell. And uh, Coach Hunter coming out to say, stop it. Just pitch normal. Just pitch well. Don't overthrow. You, nothing nothing you, can, you can do on those pitches. They just made a very good swing. And it's going to happen. It is also proof that Jack needs to definitely work on some sort of off-speed pitch. Because right now he's throwing fastballs in and around the plate, uh, well, except that last one, obviously, and uh, so that the uh, Rough Riders know to be swinging. And two balls and no strikes. And there's a ball to the right center, and that gets beyond Aaron. Aaron goes and retrieves it. Sorry, Chris goes and retrieves it. And we're gonna have a play at second. Oh, no, batter stayed at first for unknown reasons. Uh, so a very long single, but uh, drives the run in. So that's all that matters, really. So in steps uh, number 56. Is it 5-1 now? Unfortunate for the Jackrabbits. With all of this, with I think two outs. Nice dig from Jabrell. Nice dig from Jabrell, not letting that ball get past. There is no fence extending beyond uh, the, the dugout. So a ball that gets past the first baseman will roll onto the next field and be an automatic one base. Swing and a miss, 58. So that ball looked like it maybe had a little bit of tumble to it. I don't know if Jack was trying to throw some sort of sinker there. And the, the outfield being told to move back broadly there. Everybody's putting... The, get it, Jim! And the runner will stand at second. All right, Kieran, be the ball. Jack's got to get it all 54 feet to the plate, asking a lot of your catcher to stop a 60 mile an hour pitch that bounces at the 51 foot mark. Jack calling for timeout and wants to talk to his catcher. Maybe that they're going to change up the signs or something there with a runner on second. I don't think the Rough Riders have been stealing signs, but uh, baseball is baseball, and it's what we it's what folks do. So, so all this with two down, the Rough Riders have put four across the plate. That ball goes right between the legs. The runner does not go anywhere. So not sure if that was a mix up there or if the ball broke more than uh, Kieran expected, but that was right through the wickets on a 2-1 one, one count now, excuse me. 
Jack getting a new grip. Let's see if we see that same pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's it. We got we got it wrong. We got uh, we had one two rather than two one. 56 swings and misses at strike three, but not before a lot of damage is done. Uh, the Jackrabbits uh, are getting a uh, chat with Coach uh, about trying to win this ball game. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, we will see Jorge, Gianni, and Teddy. And when those gentlemen get on, we'll see Chris, Aaron, Javon, Ricardo, Isai, and Kieran all need to be ready to hit as well. Whoops, pardon me. And a call for balls in coming down from number 27 behind the plate for the Rough Riders. Number 14 back on the mound. Number 14 regularly living in the low 60s on, uh, on the gun. And was not always around the plate, but was around the plate enough to get us up three up, three down last inning. So Jorge leads off. Jorge doing a bunch of work here. Uh, I'm not sure what Jorge is. What's going on here? He's got a glove he's putting on. There's just a lot of, here he goes. You can see him coming. He's just getting his helmet on his head. Now, still getting his helmet on his head. Not sure why Jorge wasn't ready to, to bat there. So a lot of chance, a lot of spirit out of the dugout. Coach must have said, do you want to win this game or not? So now Jackrabbit's responding with a lot of chatter. And Jorge with a shot through the left side. And we love to see that. That actually gets past the second, uh, the left fielder. Let's see if we go, it takes a wide turn, but the left fielder does get the ball back in and Jorge will easily end up at first. So whatever coach said, it certainly worked. And Gianni swinging the all white bat that Aaron has. This ball is, or this bat's, uh, Seems to have all the hits in it, so I like to see that. Gianni now with a very large lead. No throw over and a slide step from 14. His pitch 62, but way up high. Wow, that dog is beautiful. <laughs> I have a wool sweater that looks like that dog. A cashmere, maybe. And Gianni with a late swing, hits the ball off his foot, foul ball. So foul ball, Gianni takes it off the foot. Gianni did an excellent job of making sure to sell it. <laughs> so there, there was no, uh, immediately grabbed his, or started limping on his foot, things, so. So the second, the shortstop playing, let me see, you can see it out there, playing way up the middle on Gianni. So another big hole between third and short, which is where Gianni loves to put the ball. We step off. And Gianni now, uh, stepping back into the box once we get Jorge vertical over at first. There's that pitch on the outside corner our boys don't like and the ump is given to both pitchers all day. That was 61 on the corner, by the way. One ball, two strikes now. Gianni's got to be smart. Teddy in the on-deck circle and Aaron in the hole. Jorge doing some crossover over there, which is given 14... And a shot that'll drop into left field. And everybody will move up 80 feet. And that ball is overthrown, but there's not going to be any plays. The catcher does a good job backing that up. So Teddy now. TK7 chance from the dugout. A nervous dad on the microphone here. Teddy's got to lift this ball into the outfield right now. There's that 60 mile an hour outside pitch. Until our boys know how to punch that through the right side, we're going to have to just, we're going to be in trouble. And Teddy now 
back in, pitcher back on the rubber. There is a force at any, well, at second, first, second, or third. So Teddy cannot hit the ball on the ground here. 62, swing and a miss. So Teddy now with the choking up on the high fire and spread the legs a little further. Let's see if he knows to turn his hips or if he's just gonna throw his hands at it. And the second baseman is only one step off and he uh, uh, steps over, doesn't receive a throw from the pitcher, but Jorge does have to scamper back. And Teddy with a pop up to center. That ball is caught by the center fielder. Nice sliding catch. So Teddy does that all with his arms there and the, and the oomph for the high fire. So one down now on a pop out the center. And in steps Chris. So we got a timeout called by the Rough Riders coach there so he can get the pitch into his uh, pitcher. And we're getting a lot of fake moves at second, both second and short crashing on that. So not clear among the middle infielders who's in charge there. Swing and a miss at a pitch in his eyes. Chris, 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 Chris was so ready to swing at the first pitch that he was uh, maybe a little aggressive. And Jorge stepping back. And Chris with the pop up. Heads, heads, heads. Oh, onto the other field, unfortunately. And so that's going to take a while to, to uh, retrieve. So first, second, one down, and no ball, two strike count. Um, and Chris in now. And there's, the ball gets through and into center. Jorge draw, drawing that throw with a giant lead. So Jorge feeling very comfortable out there. Excellent backup by the center fielder though. Could not uh, allow Jorge to get to third on that. So big hole again on the left. Oh, center fielder, or shortstop. Get on the base. Gianni about to get picked off at first. Okay, so our boys don't really understand what happens when there's a drop third strike and a runner on first. So Chris is automatically out because the base is occupied. So by him running down, he Gianni didn't know what to do there. We saw that happen already once where Teddy got picked off for the same reason. So two down now and first and second, Jackrabbits have to put some runs on the board. Now, if you remember the Rough Riders had two outs when they scored all their runs. So, um, so this is this is a chance for the Jackrabbits to repeat that top of the inning. So on contact, the runner should be going, and the pitcher steps off. We have a little dance here between Aaron and the pitcher. Pop up, 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 second baseman, and he picks it up. And with that, that ends the inning. So Jackrabbits, while they threaten again, leave two more on base. I believe that is a total of five or six left on base for the Jackrabbits. At the end of the fourth, we have Rough Riders one, Jackrabbits, oh, sorry, Rough Riders five, Jackrabbits one. We are an hour and five minutes into this game. We are moving, folks. So, so I figured it out. All right, it's you figured it out. But okay. if you want to hear, it's basically it's this. They can pitch in one day. In if they pitch more than three innings in one game, yeah, they can't pitch the next day. Gotcha. They can pitch up to seven in one game. In one in tournament. Tour, no one game. One day. Oh, they can, okay. One day they could gotcha. pitch seven innings. Gotcha. And then of course they've are they can't pitch the next game. Right. And they can pitch a maximum of eight games over three days. If that makes sense. Eight, eight innings. In case, eight innings. Eight innings. Sorry. Over eight, eight innings. Over three, but we're not playing three. So do we know? We'll just have seven. We're now. not playing three, but but yeah. So it's 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 
Gotcha. It's as if it was up to three days. So, gotcha. so bottom line is, if Teddy pitched four innings today, he'd have he, to take tomorrow off. He could not pitch tomorrow. Right. If this was, if the tournament had started on Friday and it went into Monday, he could pitch on Monday. Right. But if he pitches three today, he can pitch again tomorrow. tomorrow. If he just pitches three, and he could pitch tomorrow, as many as, um, as a. Uh, uh, four, four, at least four. Maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. actually five. five. If I we get at, five, okay. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So pitchers, uh, very different uh, rules than the Kava tournaments here at the U Triple S A. Um, Jack now will take over here in the, or not take over, but start the fifth inning. First pitch is 53 and bouncing. I'm not even sure what that looked like. He. What didn't know we were pitching. It looked like it was a warm-up pitch. Ball outside. And we just crossed the 9 o'clock hour here in your Mile High City where the sun is shining. We've got high, wispy clouds. Swing and a miss at a 57 pitch. Quite a ways outside. Looked like number 27 had decided to swing at that pitch before it even left the pitcher's hand. So Jack nibbling that outside corner, or not sorry, not nibbling, but like way outside that outside corner. Swing and a miss at 55. That's the pitch that Jack Rabbits just refused to swing at. 27 knowing that's going to be a strike gives it a whack. Swing and a miss. So five pitches. Three strikes, one down. And in steps number 11. This guy's two for two. All right, Keith keeping track, even though I'm supposed to be the stats guy. Number 11 is two for two with two hits this game. So statistically, he should get out, um, just given that baseball only lets you be successful about three out of every 10 times. However, when you're hot, you're hot. So I think the Jackrabbits need to be very ready for some to come off this bat that is going to be very playable. And we have a strike. So Jackrabbits are home. We get the uh, guaranteed last at bat. Swing and a miss, 55. Member 11 wanted that so bad. He wanted it so bad, swinging out of his shoes there. I'm sure his coaches will have a word for him about being patient. So Jack's velocity off a little bit in this inning. Not sure if it's because he's less jammed. Oh, foul tip, foul tip. Man, that was a beautiful pitch. Um, but that was a 50 mile an hour something or other. So Jack, I don't, I'm trying to figure out if it's a curveball or a changeup. At altitude here, it's hard to make the ball break a whole ton. Next pitch. That ball is outside, 57. So taking the count to full, oh no, so 2-2, two, two, my bad, 2-2 two, two now. This is Jack's count still, still in the driver's seat, but he cannot afford to throw a ball here. And a ground ball down the left field line. That's gonna end up being a double because it gets past Javon. And then we'll have a play in its second. So three for three, number 11 have a game. Well done, number 11. Like to see boys enjoy themselves and do well. So was a single and then probably uh, advanced a second on the error by Javon and left. So Jack, where he definitely doesn't want to be, pitching off the stretch, one down and a runner on second. I didn't do the defense, uh, so I probably should do that here between pitches. Oh, what a beautiful curve at 49, by the way. Holy moly. <laughs> that thing was that thing was beautiful, just dropped right in. Nothing a, a left-handed batter is gonna be, or sorry, right-handed batter is gonna be able to do with that. Next pitch, that ball is 57 and high, so 10 mile an hour difference between the curve and the fastball. We've got Joe at first, so Joe back in at first, and we've got uh, Ricardo at second, Jorge at short, and Gianni at third. Javon in left, as we mentioned. Looks like Chris still in center, and Isaiah in right. And that ball's fouled straight back. Kieran retrieves the ball, and Jack now back on the rubber.
And that ball just floats away outside. The Jack trying to uh, pick up that outside pitch. So Jack getting a little hyped here, not paying much attention to the guy at second. And that ball is hit right up the middle. And we get to play it first. And we got him. And throw over to third. Not in time to catch the runner sleeping. But uh, good job by the Rough Riders batter getting the ball over, or getting the runner over. Uh, but good job by the Jackrabbits to take trade the, the, the base for uh, one out. So two down now. And I'd love to say we're in a good spot, but we know that last inning we gave up a bunch of runs on solid hits by the Rough Riders with two down. And the next pitch. Oh, foul ball off the up. Blue took that off the face. We're going to give him a little bit of time. Both coaches asking their batters and, and catcher to take some time. Ump, Ump puts his mask back on, puts the thumbs up to both coaches. It looks like we'll be getting ready to start here. Uh, not start, but come back. Uh, with a one strike count to the batter. Jack off the windup. Where he's able to generate a little bit more power. And he bounces that ball in. That ball is going to get away and run, number 11 scores. So I think number 11's been all the way around the bases every time, if I remember correctly. So three for three and three runs scored for number 11. Clearly the MVP for the Rough Riders today. Jack's got to be able to get that ball uh, to Kieran. There it is. So when Jack can hit that 57 mile an hour outside pitch, we know we're in a good place. One ball, two strikes, two down. Hugely important pitch right here. Jack messing with the timing horribly there. Uh, number one though gets his bat on the ball. So well, well played by Jack, but also well done by number one to get his bat on that ball. If Jack's feeling it, that outside pitch is where he's got to live. Oh, and he goes 59 up high. No temptation for number one to swing at that. Coach reminding Jack that just go get this guy. And a ground ball down the left field line, but foul. Jack has the ball in hand now, and he's off the windup. So he's been wind up, he's been from the stretch, he's been messing with his timing. Oh, that was a beautiful curve. Uh, but didn't break until too late and ended up being outside. So 3-0, or sorry, 3-2. Jack's gonna need to bring a fastball here. Everybody knows it. And a shot to shortstop. Oh, I don't know if I caught it, it was so fast, but trust me. Line drive right at Jorge, who uh, both defensively was able to uh, uh, grab that ball, a little bit out of self-defense, a little bit out of well positioned. So Jack Rabbits now have to rally. There's no messing around, given the time where we're at and the, and the innings we're at. It is nine, oh, it is, where are we at? Hour 15, we have 30 okay. minutes left in the game. Hold on one second. Yep. We got um, Javon, Ricardo, and Isai will definitely bat, but I'm sure that we'll see Kieran, Isaiah, Jack, and Jabrell as well. All right, what do we know, Mark? All right, so about innings innings and uh, time. Okay. So all the games are an hour and 45. There's seven innings and an hour and 45-minute time limit. Perfect. Right? And if the, no inning starts after that time expires, expires right. in pool play. On the second, on, on the tournament on Saturday, day, on, Sunday. Sun, on Sundays, okay. there's, there are no ties. Oh right, right. So right. so they're if um so they keep it's still an hour and forty five minutes right. for games, and they keep playing into they use the international tiebreaker rules with the second base yeah, thing. Yeah, the guy, the zombie until, runner and mm, stuff. Yeah. Until uh, yeah. In, okay. And the so, only 
So same same rules as we've got when we play Kaba. The hour yeah. forty five, nothing starts yeah. after that. Except one last thing yeah. in the championship game yeah. in in Kaba, yeah. it's two hours instead of an hour and forty five. Yeah. In the championship game here, there's no time limit. Oh, they play the they play seven until innings. There's a winning. They play the seven. Oh, they innings. play all seven innings. Yes, that's oh, what it looks like to me. Okay, we'll so that see is if we get there. Right, or the run rule. Like. The run rule would come to a play, I suppose. Uh, the well, the run rules only per inning. I don't see like, well, like a if, run you were, rule if you were up, the, if you were in the championship game, if you're up by like twelve after five, the game would that play. would still yeah. be, that that yeah. seems to still apply. Okay, yeah. All right, Javon steps in, so there we go. Some uh, hopefully clears mud on how the, how these work, but for foul ball off Javon's leg. So uh, we will, for Saturday's purposes, for this game and for our 10 o'clock game, we play seven innings or an hour 45 with no innings starting after an hour uh, 45. Jackrabbits being home will be, that ball is hit in the center. It's gonna be a no man's land. He's gonna drop in for a nice single for Javon. Now you got speed on the bases. Man, I hope they put him in motion. Oh, thank you, you just put it back in there, I guess. You're done pitching for the day, Mr. Mark kind of explained to me the rules. If you pitch more than three innings, you can't. Um, I only have two Gatorades. Okay, so you have a whole another game to play. Okay. All right, Teddy coming by the uh, broadcast booth here to check in. And that ball, it pops out. And Javon is safe at second. Good throw by the catcher. Looks like Javon may have taken a glove to the face or something. And we're getting a time, oh no. What happened to 11? Did he get slid into? So number 11, you can kind of see the coach bending down, chatting with him. I hope the kid's okay. I didn't see much contact out at second, but it doesn't take much with uh, metal cleats and, uh, and a body part, They're, they can hurt. Um, without giving away too much information, I still have a gross toenail from my baseball days where I had a, I was playing second base, I got slid into and my toenail, no, we don't yeah, it got gross. <laughs> okay, I've been told not to tell about it. Let's just say that I'm, <laughs> you know, it, things can hurt even if they don't look like there was much contact. <laughs> Karen's mom having no interest in my <laughs> topical fungus. <laughs> Uh, in steps uh, Ricardo. <clears throat> Ricardo now with a real opportunity here to drive a run in. Foul ball off Ricardo's knee. So our boys are really ahead of the pitcher here where they keep driving the ball into their le front left leg. Shake it off, Ricardo. Ricardo gonna, all right. Right off, look like maybe just off the knee or just above the knee maybe for Ricardo. Javon with a lead, but second baseman sneaking in. Ooh, swing and a miss. And there will be a pass ball there and Javon will scamper into third. So a key first run of the inning now a mere 80 feet away. But Ricardo down with one ball and two strikes. Continuing to pull his head as he swings, which is frustrating. Swing and a miss on a very nice 53 mile an hour, maybe off speed pitch, something that floated in there. Really well done. So one down, Ricardo takes the K. And Isai now will have to be the man of the hour to bring in our run and to keep the line moving. So super important with a five run deficit here. It's not just about Javon at third, it's also about getting on. Swing and a miss, another 51, hour pitch, 51 mile an hour pitch. So 14, who has been throwing BBs in the low 60s, now messing around with his changeup and absolutely flummoxing our last two batters here, who are way ahead, looking for that 60 mile an hour fastball, getting a 51 mile an hour changeup. And there's a 64 mile an hour fastball. So, wow, that was a 13 mile an hour change of speed between the two pitches. So Kieran's gonna, or sorry, Isai is gonna have to, um, uh, be swinging here, if that's even close. Kieran in the on-deck circle. Oh, 
Whoa! 64. Beautiful catch by 27. Way behind Isai. Uh, that would have hurt had that made contact. I'm glad Isai was able to get out of the way. Oh, nice, 52 mile an hour pitch. Pulled the string on, Isai way ahead of it. Great piece of, great piece of pitching by number 14. Now two down, Kieran steps in. Kieran can't be looking to walk here. Kieran's gonna have to be looking to put a ball in play. Ooh, that ball floats in 50 high. A non-competitive pitch there for Kieran, so he's just gonna take that. And we got Javon ready to come in on a pass ball. That ball is high, 63. So again, Kieran with an excellent on-base percentage due to the number of walks he has drawn this season. Knows the strike zone very well as the catcher and takes ball two there. Next pitch. That ball is outside and nobody's coming. We did not feel comfortable, I guess, setting Javon there. Ball went off 27's glove and up the first baseline. I have no idea if there'd have been a play, but you'd have to make an absolute split second decision to jump there. With the short backstop it's and the hard uh, wood fencing, the balls, especially coming in at 63 miles an hour, is gonna bounce around a lot. Next pitch. And Kieran will be taking, obviously, 3-0. 3-1 now, that was right at the, the letters. So if we can see that again, Kieran can drive that into right center maybe. Kieran does not go. He's going to take first on a walk. So Kieran again with that great look to keep the inning going. Isaiah will step in. And we get a timeout. Uh, my guess is they're going to talk about a trick play here. 14 is pitching way too well to even be considering pulling him. Instead, it's going to be when Kieran runs, do you throw it all the way to second? Do you throw it back to the pitcher? Do you do some cutoff play at the shortstop? Do you do a throw down third base? That's the conversation that's happening at the mound right now. So you can see there's a lot more conversation with the catcher than there is with the pitcher. So you can see the coach is talking to the catcher. Oh, you can't see that. Um, move, move, Blue. But just trust me. Uh, he's talking to the catcher more, way more than the pitcher. And then he just hit number seven on the chest. Number seven is the third baseman. So if anybody's paying attention, you'll know it's gonna be a back pick. So when Kieran, when Kieran runs, 27's gonna take the pitch and throw it to third. So Javon's got to be very ready for that back pick because the ball's coming down to third base. Now, Kieran should be on second after this first pitch. And Isaiah should have the take sign here. And a throw over just to keep Javon close. The pitcher throwing fastballs to his third baseman. So uh, <laughs> third, third baseman might want to talk with him uh, at the half inning about Hey man, I don't have all the protective gear that the catcher does. Kieran goes, back pick as play as called, and no play because Javon was ready and back in, and that will then allow Kieran to take second. So that was a ball. So big pitch there. We we got one ball to Isaiah, and we, now we've got two runners in scoring position with two out. Oh, Isaiah thumps it right back to the pitcher in a self-defense move. And that's three outs. So Jack Rabbit's gonna have to, um, I don't know what they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to turn this inning or get some outs quick as we go. We're an hour 25, okay. So that's roughly an inning left. We go to the top of the sixth and Jack Rabbit's still down 6-1 after the Rough Riders had that very good one inning uh, two out rally. So we'll see who takes the mound. Isaiah, uh, Isai will take the mound, it looks like. So we'll get you some stats on Isai. He's pitched a little bit for us. Isai's probably going to pitch to contact here. He's not going to blow anybody away with his speed. But used to pitch in Little League, was converted to a uh, catcher for the last couple of years, and just recently said to coach that he'd like to see, he'd like to get back on the mound. And so we'll see how that uh, works out today. For the Jackrabbits pitching, let me just see where we're at on Esai. Give you some stats on Esai. He's pitched one inning this season. Uh, he faced five batters in that inning. He threw 24 pitches. 
But uh, importantly, or he gave up one run, excuse me, and he had one strikeout. So, oh, Game Changer, this is fun. Game Changer does ERA per seven innings based upon our age. So um, normally, if you gave up one run in one inning in the majors, you'd have a 9.0 ERA, which is that you would give up at that pace, you would give up nine runs over the course of nine innings. But here, because we only play seven, Isai's ERA is seven, uh, one run uh, over seven innings. So that's what we'll see. Isai starting off with a high heater at 56. And Kieran will be his battery mate. He quickly got the gear on and uh, was back behind the plate. So i like to see that hustle from Kieran. We got Gianni at third. And up the middle, of course, we've got Jorge, the man who made the last play of the hour, uh, last inning. And it looks like he's talking to Ricardo. He's probably talking about some Fortnite solutions or what they're going to do when they get home to level up. For those of you not without family members addicted to Fortnite, there's a, there was a new s season, I think, released not too long ago, and everybody's trying to level up in the new season. Uh, Teddy expressed much jealousy that... Uh, his colleague there in right, uh, Jabrell, is already two, two levels higher than he is. Joe will be anchoring first again. Uh, in center, it looks like Jack, and Jack is playing a little soft toss, very little soft toss, with Javon in left. And I'm a little concerned because it looked like Isai was having a hard time finding the zone here. A lot of his warm-up pitches have been not, a, not especially competitive. Aye. So uh, I think the goal here was to make sure that uh, Jack and Teddy could save their arms, of course, for tomorrow. And we'll see Isai's pitching here. Ball's in, coming down now. It's a call. For those of you that love baseball as much as I do, not only do we have two Jackrabbits games today, 8 a.m., which you're watching, and the 10 a.m. game against the Catalyst Cardinals, who we've already played this year, in the beautiful uh, Robin Egg Blue uh, Cardinals uniforms of the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, um, we'll have that. You also, I would recommend that you tune in. Find ESPN Plus on your ESPN app or on your, your uh, TV. Log in with your Disney log in or if you're a Verizon customer it comes with your Verizon account. Arkansas is playing Alabama later this afternoon and it, is, it will prove to be a phenomenal baseball game. Yesterday's baseball game was glorious baseball. And a 58 mile an hour pitch too high for Esau here. And I believe that game will start at 2 o'clock central which should be 1 o'clock in mountain time. But yeah, definitely tune into that game. It is Certainly much better than what the Rockies are putting on the field these days. Ooh, 57, but non-competitive fastball outside. So Isai not coming over the top and pointing his hand at the end. He's, he's really just kind of slinging it, but he needs to be really finishing with his delivery, his index finger and pointer finger pointing right at Kieran's chest. A lot more like that. And a 3-0 now, so that's not a great place to be to the leadoff hitter. That ball float in high. Four pitch walk. A lot of shouts of support for Isai from the parents and from the dugout. And the second left-hander of the lineup is in now. And no paying no attention. We're not going to have much of a play at second um, because the um, batter or the runner had a huge jump. So not much that uh, Kieran could do behind the plate. But we did get a strike there. So I think it was a strike, wasn't it? Oh, maybe not. I don't know. You were paying more attention than I was. And that ball's popped straight up. And, and we don't talk, but we do make the catch. Jorge makes the catch. That's frustrating. That is probably Jack's ball coming in on that. But again, you got to talk. If you're not talking, 
not much you can do uh, here for um, making making simple plays when you're running into each other. The runner at second takes his lead, swing and a miss at a 58 mile an hour pitch right down the middle. So maybe those opening jitters for Esai, or yeah, Esai have uh, scampered away because that was a beautiful first pitch strike. And that ball is way inside. Number 14 bounces out of the way. Also, Esai lost his hat there. So that's, uh, we have a, we have the, I don't know what you'd call it, the hair volume club on the on the jackrabbits so many of the boys growing lofty oh and that ball is thrown down to third on a really nice uh throw and catch by kieran and gianni but the runner again with a huge lead is going to end up not being uh you can't pick him off there it's going to be too tough so isai's sister riding around on a scooter not a care in the world while his dad speed eating sunflower seeds over on the on the bench. A good stop now. We got two balls and one strike. Three one. Three one. All right, three one. Esai now has got to bring this pitch in. Oh, that ball is ball four. And the runner will take first on the base on balls. So one down and runners on first and third. And Esai just got to locate in and around the plate and dare the Rough Riders to hit the ball where we aren't. A ground ball up the middle would be a perfect double play ball here. And there's a bunt out of play and hits the uh, building, the shed behind us for strike one. And a pop-up. We like to see that. Now it's 0-2. Isai in this best position on the mound, all inning. And we're... Isai now with a huge arsenal of pitches, so he needs to just keep the ball in and around the plate, maybe keep it down so it ends up being a ground ball. This batter is clearly trying to pop the ball up. Runner goes, takes, takes the double play off the agenda. Kieran with a great stop. So now the only plays at first and a ground ball in the infield probably scores a run. You saw a toe in the rubber here on a one, two count, one down. Oh, that ball. Uh, Blue took that bounce uh, right off, um, right off some parts, and didn't even flinch. He's a, he's a Goliath back there. Some jokes of good stop, Blue, from our, our parents. Uh, Isai now with a three-two count and one down. Got to go back to that first couple of pitches. <laughs> Isai being reminded he should smile and have some fun out there. Pop up down the right field line. Joe underneath it with a nice catch. I don't know if you could see that, but a basket catch bailing out his pitcher there. But Isai again putting the ball when it's in play. Sorry, when it's when it's in the in the strike zone, Rough Riders are putting it in play, and then our boys are making some good defensive plays today. The exception of the time that uh, Teddy and Esai ran into each other on a pop-up in foul territory. Our boys have played really good leather. There it is, there it is, there's the pitch. That was the secret. Whoever told Esai to smile, that was the answer right there. Someone, someone reminded Esai to have a good time. There's a little smirk on his face now. He's getting it. He's enjoying himself. And a ground ball. Nice and easy, we'll pick it up and throw it over. And Isai gets out of the inning without leading, 
without giving up any runs on what appeared to be uh, a recipe for disaster with first and third and only one down. So Jack Rabbits hold tight. Will the bats uh, will the bats return? We'll have Jack, Jabrell, and Joe, and then I expect that we will see Jorge, Gianni, Teddy, Chris, Aaron, and Javon, etc. If we're going to win this game, because we go to we go to bottom of six. Bottom of the sixth. But I'm trying to figure out the timing. Sorry. Yep, sorry. Hour 36. So likely the end of the game here at the bottom of the sixth. We don't start a new inning after hour 45. Even if the Jackrabbits went one, two, three, it'd be tough to do in less than nine minutes, especially given that we got warm up here. Ooh, the hot hitting number 11 will take the rubber for the save. His name is Tater? Oh, okay. All right, I try not to give personally identifiable information on the of the other opponents because I haven't given us permission. Yeah, we believe his nickname might be Tater. Uh, uh, but number 11 here, warming up, throwing in the low 50s. And it looks like the coaches for uh, the Rough Riders following the same philosophy that Coach Paul and the Jackrabbits coaches are, which is going to have to save some arms for tomorrow. So that sixth inning we're going to need to put in. Somebody who's probably not. Eight. Yeah. And a ground ball down the right field line. That will be a single, maybe a double. Jack's motoring into second. So this is basically where he's walking off or not. I, that's what I think. Jack yeah. shooting arrows so into the sky. Four minutes to go. Yeah, so we think there's something like four to six minutes left. Time will expire most likely as Jack Rabbits are batting. So we either walk this off or we, uh, or we will have to come back and certainly beat Catalyst to get a better seat. In steps Jabrell. Jabrell desperate to get a hit, often swinging early. Sleeps out of the way. Wow, a lot of spa, uh, excitement from the Jackrabbits dugout. The Jack's double, leadoff double did a lot to inspire the boys to get excited. Jabrell now set. Oh, he swings a pitch that's nowhere near. There might be a play at third. There is not. And Jabrell now desperately wants to hit this ball, this pitcher, especially since he's only throwing about 50 miles an hour. Swing and a miss, 49 mile an hour pitch in the dirt. I think it might have a bit of a curve to it, a bit of a drop to it anyway. One ball, two strikes now. Joe in the on-deck circle, about to flip the lineup over. And that ball is in the dirt. Excellent backhanded stab by 27. Came in at 57. So, so throwing, throwing uh, really hard there, but not quite able to locate that pitch. Swing and a miss at a pitch in his eyes. 53 mile an hour for strike three and the first out of the inning. Jack taunting the pitcher, trying to draw a throw, but the third baseman not holding him on. Now Joe, I believe is one for two today, is Swinging at a pitch in the dirt. I don't know what that pitch is fooling our boys on. It looks out of the hand. It looks like it's in the. Uh, it's not going to be a strike. But our boys, I think, hoping to ball is high and a 45 mile an hour pitch that drops in way late. Ball's in the dirt. And Joe's sitting pretty now, if he can get that fastball down the middle. Swing and he miss, he does, and 54 goes right past him. So Joe has to get on here, cannot go down. That ball definitely tried to curve, uh, but 45 miles an hour and, and way high. Full count now, full count. 
and Joe corks that ball way into right center field. That ball is going to drop, and Jack is going to uh, trot home, and Joe safely at second with the RBI. That is exactly what we need, some hard hit balls, deep, moving guys around multiple bases. Time has expired, we'll finish the inning, says the home plate ump. Been a really good ump all day, had control of the game, knows what's going on, solid strike zone. That's a balk. You, you can't step up, and Joe gets him on a balk. Uh, pitcher was on the, uh, as a rubber, as a windup, and as soon as he steps off back, that is a motion towards home, and that's a balk. And we get uh, Joe at third, and we get a timeout from the coach, and he clearly is coming out to have a conversation about his team keeping it together mentally. Uh, they are up by four runs, right? They, they had to go five runs for this game to end, and uh, they're up by four runs. As such, they're... Um, can't get too wound up about a single runner or a single batter, but instead would be probably more than happy to trade an out for a run. So, now Jorge will step in. He is one, one for two today as well. So really heads up base running play by Jack, uh, by Joe to steal third there when the pitcher was on the wind up. And that ball bounces nowhere. And Joe stands at third. Really hard to figure out where that ball is going to go or what's going on. So number 11 trying to snap off a lot of curves. Some of them have been beautiful. Some of them have like that one danced way early the plate. Ball is inside, I suppose. Oh, number 11 has a has green on the inside of his mitt. That's cool. I like that. Very much matches his uh, uniform. Takes the hat off, wipes the sweat from his brow. Number 11 laboring here a little bit with a runner on third and Jorge in the box. And that ball skips across the plate at 54 miles an hour. So we got 3-0. Jorge undoubtedly well, I shouldn't say undoubtedly. Jorge is one of those gifted batters who might have the green light here, but most likely is going to be told to take ball four. Jorge takes ball four, really sells it, and then starts walking to first, sort of challenging his uh, the catcher to to, uh, to call it, to to frame that. And we get a timeout and a second visit. That will be the end of the afternoon for number eleven, who had a great day at the plate. And unfortunately, I'm afraid, you know I'm, I hope it doesn't overshadow. Uh, his performance here doesn't overshadow the fact that he was phenomenal at the plate. And we'll have a new pitcher come in. He'll get his warm-up throws. And with 6-2 and runners on first and third, Jackrabbits, who have left a lot of runners on base, um, have got to break that habit. So we'll see what happens. Big shout out to my wife and Teddy's mom for providing us all food and beverage. She got up first one out of bed this morning, the unsung hero of the family, to uh, uh, to get us all breakfast burritos and water and sandwiches. So I'm getting into my water for the first time today and realizing how thankful I am because I wouldn't even think to bring it. I would just be parched after four hours of talking. So number 26 here. Throw in the high 50s, low 60s. Gianni will step in, Teddy in the on-deck circle, Aaron in the hole. And if we're gonna win this game, all of those guys have to not only get on, but they have to score. So Gianni, who is two for two today. And Jorge steals third, or second, excuse me, with a real heads up play. A lot of run in here. So now you got two runners in scoring position and our best hitter 
at bat. So the pitcher now will go from the wind up because there's no place for those batters to go. Let's see if that gets him a little bit better control. This ball st stays elevated at 62 miles an hour, ball two. And that ball is in the dirt. And Gianni will be taking here, undoubtedly. Puts the bat up like he's gonna swing, but he does not. And that ball is way up high. 27 with an amazingly acrobatic catch. Wow, I loved it. I know, yeah, so. And I don't know what Teddy's heart's doing, but this Teddy's dad's here, heart is beating a mile a minute right here. And that ball is corked in the left center where I just called it. I'm not gonna say, all the way to the fence. That will score one. That will score two. Gianni will be coming home. Teddy will be held at second for a three run double. Yeah! 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 Oh, what a hit. What a hit. He, he sheepishly does does the, he sheepishly does the, the Jackrabbit's ears, and I apologize, I think I spiked the audio so much. But man, I am the proudest dad around there with a three-run homer. Teddy leads the team in RBIs and uh, extends his lead there. I gotta go check with my par partner here, Keith. What's the score? 6-5. Tying run on second with one down, and we'll have an intentional walk to Chris. Uh, okay, fine. Intentional walk to Chris, fine. Sets up the double play. Um, and so uh, a little Aaron being suggested that, uh, you know, they'd rather face him than Chris. And so Aaron, with who's one for two today, um, actually a little bit better uh, at the plate today than, than Chris. Swing and a miss at a 57 mile an hour pitch on the outside corner. Tying run on second, winning run, given a free pass on first. Teddy taking a big lead, really aggressive lead. I like to see it. And second baseman now being forced to come over, leaving a huge hole on the right side for Aaron, where he likes to put the ball. Swing and a miss at a 62 in the eyes. All right, we got 0-2 count now. Time has expired. Tying run on second, winning run on first. That ball floats in way too high for Aaron's liking. One ball, two strikes, and one down. Ooh! Does not hit Aaron, but is way inside on a 61 mile an hour pitch. That would have hurt big time. Aaron does the dance the other way. Back in control of this count now, 2-2. Two, two. That ball is in the dirt, 3-2. Three, Three balls, two strikes. Pressure on uh, 28 now to, to bring it. Aaron has battled all the way back after a couple of initial swings. Javon in the on-deck circle. And that ball's popped up and out of the way. Good, heads up, heads up! Ooh, that almost took out some uh, spectators on the other field. So, Eugene tracking it down. Teddy with a nice big lead, stepping off, making the pitcher step off. Aaron now, big pitch from number 28 on its way. And he corks that one into left center. That ball's gonna score one. It may go to score two. They intentionally want Chris. Will Chris be the winning run? Here it is. And we win. And we win. Game. 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 Jack Rabbits. What an inning. What an inning. Well done. Well done. Oh, what a well played game by the Rough Riders. Man, it is just one inning is all that matters. And with the pile on, please take a look at that. Please revel in that teamwork and that happiness. Man, Rough Riders played extremely well. One inning where we put the bat on the ball 
That was all the difference. That is a 1-0 victory, sorry, a 7-6 victory for the Jackrabbits to go 1-0 on the day. We will be back very soon, ladies and gentlemen, for the uh, 10 o'clock game, but the Jackrabbits and the Rough Riders having a heck of a game. The parents celebrating like crazy. We are supposed to start again at 10. Uh, these umps started us early, so I'm not sure if that will happen, but make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell. The bell will tell you that we're going live. Make sure you're there. Aaron, by the way, with the walk-off uh, RBIs was two for three today, continues to lead the team in hitting. So uh, there's no way the Rough Riders would know that, but they walked the winning run onto first to face the best hitting uh, Jack Rabbit of the season so far. With that, we're going to sign off so we can charge our equipment a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being uh, a Jack Rabbits fan. Go Jack Rabbits, vamos liebres. For Keith and myself, we are pumping full of adrenaline, but we're signing off. We'll see you in about 15 minutes.